Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for all being here, um, being a part of the discussion, expressing your ideas and the work that you have been uh, engaged in. But I do have to say that we sit here today in another iteration of the same hearing we've had over and over again in the 118th Congress, the sixth hearing of the same topic, a merry-go-round of Republican greatest rejections of conspiracy theories. We are here to attempt to once again discuss the same issue in a different way. Not once has my colleague, the chairman, requested any ideas from my side as to what we might agree on discussing as the weaponization of the federal government. I would say the IRS propensity to audit working class people and especially people of color, rather than wealthy individuals, can show some weaponization of the federal government. Or a book banning and censorship in schools and school districts receiving federal funding. As with many hearings, my Republican colleagues don't really want us to work together. Chairman Jordan has allowed his staff to provide the bare minimum notice for hearings without a subject or identifiable topic without publicly announcing who the witnesses are, without even the decency to tell the minority anything. I know that we've come to think that that's normal, but that's not how Congress has always worked. This is in fact the sixth, sixth time in this select subcommittee that a hearing of ours has had the exact same name, hearing on the weaponization of the federal government. That's a broad, broad topic and could mean anything. For the minority to prepare, to engage with the majority with such a topic, just as further demonstration how far we are from actually doing work. This is about platform. This is about speaking to Fox News. This is not about solving problems for the American people. We've come so far from what Congress has been, even in the short time that I've been here, which I can't believe is almost a decade now. It's shameful. So I'll use my side in our discussion to talk about what we think is the weaponization of the federal government, what we believe to be the real threat to our democracy and the rule of law the attempted weaponization of the federal government during the Trump administration, or even more frightening, the extreme weaponization of the federal government that the former president has told us he will do if he is reelected. Just since the, our last hearing, the fifth hearing, former President Trump has made more terrifying statements on the weaponization of the federal government should he have a second term. Donald Trump has said he will, quote, act like a dictator on day one of any second term. He has said he would proudly claim full credit for overturning Roe v. Wade, a woman's protection from overbearing state and her right to privacy. He's argued in court as a legal argument that he would have full immunity as president even if he ordered the assassination of individual Americans. He says he's going to lay off thousands of non-political career diplomats, replacing experienced government experts that serve with distinction with individuals whose main quality is passing a loyalty test to him. He has vowed to appoint a special prosecutor just to go after Joe Biden, his entire family, threatening them multiple times because he doesn't like them and he, they are a threat to him, not to our country. Trump and his followers are obsessed with charging Biden or any Biden individual for a set of wildly changing charges with a real set of projection in that to things that he himself and his own family have done for charges that our congressional Republicans still cannot seem to produce documents or their own witnesses to corroborate. Now, one of the other statements that I gave to you a little earlier 
to remove non-political career diplomats with individuals who are willing to take a loyalty pledge is also very troubling. It should be obvious to anyone that replacing these qualified people en masse with expressly political operatives of any stripe would undermine Americans' interests and is the hallmark of a fascist state. And finally, the idea, the sick audacious notion that a president could order the assassination of an American citizen at will without a single legal consequence runs aground of every American sense of right and wrong. That is what Donald Trump argues he can do. Not in public speeches alone that could just be campaign promises or rhetoric, but in a federal court filing where his attorneys must be put the argument requested and discussed with their client, Donald Trump. Donald Trump believes as president that he can deploy, let's think about this, the American military on American soil to attack an American target, an individual, which in this hypothetical example has not declared any form of hostility towards the American state itself, but is merely who the president believes is not his friend or agrees with him. This idea is, and you know, this is my own legal parlance, the craziest illegal, dictatorial, despotic, demagoguery, autocratic crap I've ever heard. Today, the chair is going to have us go through another round of claims about the weaponization that are his witnesses' beliefs about social media on the part of the federal government. The chair and my Republican colleagues on this subcommittee will ignore or try to make light of or even mock the unmistakable promises Donald Trump has made to weaponize the government on his own behalf. Where are the hearings about a former president who believes he can use the federal government to kill his political opponents? Where is the hearing about a president who believes that the most important quality of his appointments to run the greatest and most important country in the world is that they are loyal solely to him? Where is the hearing to discuss, never mind Trump, but even the idea? Let's not just make it about Trump. Let's have a hearing about the idea of a president using the resources of the federal government, the appointment of a special prosecutor to go after those he deemed to be the enemy, not of this country, not of this ideals, but of national security, but of himself. And if you don't think I am thinking this, if you don't think that this is my thought and important to me, let's take it from the word of people who work directly with the man. John Bolton, former national security advisor to Donald Trump. I think Trump will cause significant damage in a second term, damage that in some cases will be irreparable. John Kelly, his former chief of staff, said in a second term, it's just simply would be chaotic because he'd continually be trying to exceed his authority, but the sycophants would go along with it. It would be a nonstop gunfight with the Congress and the courts. Bill Barr, President Trump's former attorney general, I think for people going into that second term of Trump administration, I think they have to be ready to oppose the abuse of government power. That's the weaponization of the federal government. But I don't think that's ever gonna be a topic that the majority is going to bring for us. So we, the majority, will have to bring it for you. And with that, I yield back. Without objection, I'll 